is a true man of God. Let us welcome the speaker for this morning, Brother Joseph Edwards, who will bring God's word with clarity, with power, and with anointing. Could you stand and welcome him this morning? Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning to everyone on the World Wide Web. This morning, I want to greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, I want to speak to us on the topic, What do you see? when faced with a problem. This morning, we want to look into the word, the word of God. Just a short verse. It's Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 18 and 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Amen. Amen could have your seats. Hallelujah. The choice is always ours. You know, what we see. What do you see when you're faced with a problem? Sometimes, you know, something happened and probably you have a headache and before you speak to God and ask God to Take it away. Your neighbor come and you say, Girl, what's going on? Why what's going on? What, what happening? And what comes out of your mouth is so important. You say, Neighbor, I have a headache here and it's killing me. You know, you don't need, sometimes we say the Obia man put a curse on you, or the witch put a curse on you. But your words is what put in a curse on you. You put in a curse on yourself this morning. You know, I used to work with a guy, you know, a young guy, he came to work with me and he didn't, he couldn't, he wasn't able to read. He couldn't read, he didn't know the measurements on a tape, taught him to read the tape, tried to get him into the altar, but he was too proud. So proud, he said that he didn't want anybody to talk down to him. So he felt that if he had to go, somebody had to teach him to read, they would be talking down to him. And he lived in an area where stealing, selling drugs, liming on the block was prevalent. And from time to time, he'd come to work and he'd say, boy, yesterday one of my partners got killed. Next time, same thing. So a day he came, I say, well, this, you know, sometimes you have, you have a lot of friends, but somebody special to you. He said, he say, one of my real partners, my brethren, got killed yesterday. I say, how many of them get killed by now? He said, four. I say, here we're going on. I say, why did you continue to lie with these fellas? They get killed one by one, and you continue to be with them. You're on the block lining with them because the drug, the drug man, the drug lord, giving them what they need. You know, they want to be on the block in the night, so you give them punching and Red Bull. So they're out on the block lining and they're drinking punching and Red Bull and selling their drug. They're not getting the money. They're not making the money. They're making the money for him. But he giving them what they want, what they think they need. So when he told me that, I say, he said to me, uh, he said, listen, these are my homies. The guys I grew up with, I can't just leave them out. We are all sufferers together. <laughs> I could tell you this. He said it, and he's still a sufferer up to today. Because about a year ago, that was I talking probably more than 20 years ago. And about a year ago, he said he lost my number. Somebody, he met somebody who was working with me, and they gave him my number. And he's calling me, asking me if I could get a job for him, if I could have, if I could, if I were working, I could get him to, you know, get him to, to, to work too. 
I didn't have anything to give to him. So I could tell you, he's still suffering. But this morning, I want to point you to a man who, despite the name that he was given, he decided not to live up to that name. You see, my friend, he was a victim of his environment. The people that are, was around him, the, the area, his friends were all thieves and drug pushers. And although he was not a thief or a drug pusher, those are the people that, that, that he just he, he, that's the environment he lived in. And he felt that he had to stay in that environment. But this morning, we want to look at the book of Chronicles. Chronicles chapter 4, reading from verse 1 Chronicles chapter 4. Reading from verse 9. You know, Chronicles is a book that, that, that chapter 4 is dealing with the genealogy of David. It's telling you all about his children, his wives, and you know, this one begat that one and all that. But it seems as though the writer of Chronicles, when he got to verse 9, he had an aha moment. You know, sometimes you're talking to somebody and you're talking about one thing and then something drops into your mind and you say, aha, before I forget. And something, you tell them something totally unrelated to the conversation you were having. Let's look at Chronicles chapter 9, chapter 4. First Chronicles 4 and verse 9, it says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with sorrow, but verse 10 did. And Jabez called on the Lord of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that I may not grieve, that, it, that I may not grieve, that I may not cause it pain. Hallelujah. And God granted him that which he requested. Now this morning, you know, sometimes we, a guy grew up in an area and he decides to cause pain. Let's see, let's see, let, let's choose a, a famous gangster, Al Capone. And, you know, this guy in the sea, he grew up in this area and he decides to cause pain. So because he decides to be an outlaw, all of a sudden, the people in the area start calling him Capone because he is exhibiting all the attributes of Al Capone. But Jeba, Je Jabez wasn't so fortunate. You see, his mother gave him the name that was, was pain. His name meant pain. So it would have been easy for him to you know, cause pain. He could have lived up to his name. You know, he could have said, well, look, my mother gave me this name and I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice in the matter. This is the name that was given to me and this is what I am going, this is the life I am going to live. But he didn't do that. He changed his course, his future, his everything was changed because he called upon the name of the Lord. You know, sometimes the, the Bible didn't tell us how long Jabez requested how many times he prayed maybe you you might have a problem and you might be praying for a long time and you feel boy nothing is happening this thing so 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 you decide you know you take matters into your own hand you decide to go the other way but Jabez didn't do that you see the Bible tells us that one could put a thousand to flight. But even if, let's say, you've been praying and nothing is happening, maybe what is stacked up against you is more than a thousand. So you need 
to do like the police, you need to call for backup. You need to ask somebody to assist you. Get somebody to pray with you. you sometimes you feel that you don't want nobody to know your business. So you're battling alone, you're going down alone, and nothing is happening because what is stacked up against you is more than a thousand. Throw away the pride. Put away the pride. Call for backup. Ask somebody to pray with you. Ask somebody to pray for you. One could put a thousand to flight. Your, what is stacked up against you is more than a thousand. Two can put a ten thousand to flight. So you need assistance. Hallelujah. You know, when I, you know, sometimes we look at, we, we be praying and things taking long to happen. And I'm saying sometimes your prayer is like what we call snail mail. You know, you, 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 when, you, when, you, you, when you have snail mail, you, you put your, th your thing in an envelope, you put a stamp on it and you drop it in the box. Once it's dropped in the box, you have no control over it. It takes however long it wants to get to where you want it. Right? This morning I want to say to you that you need to endure. You see, when I, when I first met my wife, we, she asked me the question. <laughs> How many children you want? <laughs> I said two. <laughs> But what happened is, first child was born during the recession. So it was a, it was a sort of an unspoken thing. With, with, with the things was hard, you know, I, I, I was working. Sometimes you go to work, they send you back home, you have nothing to do. Sometimes you work a whole week, no pay. So you decide to hear what's going on. We do, we, we stick with the one. And we do the best that we could do for the one. So we're going down the road, one child, we're doing everything. I am now working outside of Trinidad, things are a little better. I'm in St. Vincent working, my wife calls me. And I'm feeling well. <laughs> when, when, you go on, when you come home, I want you to take me to the doctor. So we go on to the doctor. She said to the doctor, the doctor, she told the doctor what was going on. The doctor said, let me do a pregnancy test. She said, no doctor. No, nah, no doctor. The doctor said, let me do my work. <laughs> <laughs> do a pregnancy test. Found out she's pregnant. Not even thinking. Not, none of us thinking that she would be pregnant at that time. But 17 years later, that word was spoken so long before, probably 19 years ago, came to pass. Amen. 17 years later, the second child came. So I'm saying to you, sometimes you, you, you need to wait. You need to hold on. You need not to, you know, give up. You know, even though you're not thinking, the word always, the old, you, you, what you say, you, you say it already. You can't pull it back. It's gone. And once it's out there, sometime it might bear fruit. Man, this morning I want to point us to another man. Another man in the Bible who prayers was answered immediately. You know, let's look at the book of Second Kings. Chapter 20, reading from verse 1. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 20, reading from verse 1. It said, In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went to him and said to him, Thus said the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall not, for you shall die and not live. Now, you know, this wasn't the doctor in the hospital. It wasn't the doctor in the hospital who sent a nurse to tell you, you know, you wouldn't live, you were going to die. This was a prophet, a man of God, bringing the word of God to you, because he said, thus saith the Lord. You shall die and not live. If not you, what would you have done? 
what would you be saying? Some of you, some people might start crying. Some, somebody might even get a heart attack and die one time. You know, I used to play rugby at one time and one day going around the savannah, I stopped to watch a rugby game and just a little while after I stopped, I see a guy get knocked down. He run in. The guy was going to tackle him and he run into the near the guy and he collapsed on the ground right there. Took him to the hospital. He was in a coma for a while. And um, when he got up, the doctors told him, you're going to be paralyzed from the waist down. All the time he good. On hearing that one time, stop eating. Within a week he was dead. So sometimes if you, if you got a, 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 if something that was you, the Lord sent a message to you saying you're going to die. What would you do? Would you decide to drop down and die one time? Would you start to cry? Would you start to think about what your children would do? You know, sometimes you say you might be the word, the bread, we're not in the house and the son not working, start saying, boy, what my son go do? I am the one who does help him out a little bit. What would my grandchildren do? I am the one who give them money to go to school in the morning. And you start wondering, forgetting to call on the name of the Lord. But this morning I want to tell you the, 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 the king, Hezekiah, had a totally different outcome. He did something totally different. Let's look at verse 2. Verse 2. Set your house in order. Right. So then he said, then he turned his face, this is Hezekiah, turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and with, the, and with a loyal heart and have done what was good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle of the court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father. I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Surely I will heal you. Hallelujah. And on the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. And I will indeed, I will add to your days 15 years. I will deliver you and this city from the hand of the king of Assyria and I will defend this city for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. You see, Hezekiah didn't procrastinate. Upon hearing that he would die, he turned to the Lord one time. He didn't wait. He didn't cry. He didn't bawl out. Well, he cried to the Lord, yes. But he didn't just sit down and, and say, Woe is me. He called on the name of the Lord and the Lord delivered him. He said, The Lord healed him. I see? The Lord healed him. And he delivered him. He gave it, he added 15 years. You know, sometime recently I went to a funeral and the, and the pastor said, When death comes, you can't turn it back. But you can't turn it back. But certainly God could turn it back. You know? Certainly God could turn it back. You know, Hezekiah was facing certain death. He prayed. And things changed. You see, this morning I want to say to us, you know, sometimes we get to... It, 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 we, when we hear something, we hear a problem... We hear something that, that, does, that grieves us. We forget about God. And we only concentrate on the problem when we should be calling on the name of the Lord. This morning, I want to say to us that, you know, I, I, I am 
I'm one of those guys who, in my early years, was very shy. I would call myself an introvert at that time. Nobody, at, you see me standing here at that time? Nobody, absolutely nobody could have gotten me to come up here and say one thing. Not one person. You understand? My mother used to tell me, she said, boy, how you get a wife? You don't talk. So, so but you know, that part, God will go. That, that had nothing to do with me. But you know, this thing bothered me. I went to school and teacher would put work up on the board. And unless the teacher point, you, point me out and say, you come up here, I never say a word. And this thing bothered me. I got into church and be in, class, in Sunday school, I wouldn't say anything. This thing, after a while, it bothered me. I started to tell myself I had to come out of this. No, but based on no matter my best efforts, my, no matter what I think about it, couldn't get out. And one day I went to Bible study and the pastor said, he put us into groups. Now, some of us, we believe that the pastor has special powers. So, so when it's time to pray, the pastor had to pray for you. You don't want nobody else to pray for you. You know, I have seen that in church where the pastor called the church for prayer and they have lines. And, and you have a, a, the pastor in this line. You might have a, 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 another a elder in this line. And, you know, you put, you designate people different lines. They've got so many people in church. He alone can pray for everybody. And you notice that you might be in the line. You're going up in this line here. And when you do so, you see you're not in the line with the pastor. You're going on the next line because you want to be the worthy pastor to pray for you. You understand? But that was my case that night because that night, the pastor put us in groups. And I was in a group, and I decided this way. So I've been thinking, try try battling this thing by myself all the time. Let me do something else. Let me make, let me make, I want to make my request known unto God. So that night, I told them, I don't even know who prayed for me that night. I said, I told them what was going on. I want to be able to speak. I want to get rid of the fear of speaking. And somebody prayed for me. I don't even know who it was. I think it was a sister. I don't know. But, you know, after they prayed, you're still scared. But God has set you up, you know. God has set you up. You understand? So, after I prayed, the pastor had nothing to do with it. It was a few days, a couple of weeks before Father's Day. And the pastor came and he said, the men have to handle the service on Father's Day. You had to do the worship. You had to do the cheering. You had to do the preaching. Everything. And he appointed people. You do the preaching. All the men do the singing. And he come to me. He say, you do the cheering. Well, I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I was scared, but I want to back down. So I decided, I decided, well, I went home, got in the word, and bam, my father did come, and I went through that day, glad the day finished. So, <laughs> glad the day finished, because I got through that. Right, that done, I said, I, 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 I don't talk. Hey, hey, next Sunday, I go to church. Pastor called me. He said, I'm putting you on a roster from today. So I'm putting you on a roster. You will do, you and you and the three of you, all you will do the cheering. Still scared, but now I had to prepare myself because I had to talk. <laughs> so that has been my position. God made me, you know, you know sometimes you God, God pushing you in a direction and you're, you're fighting it. Because when I went out to work, surprisingly, the boss noticed that I was able to do certain things. And so, within a short space of time, I was the face of the company. 
I, uh, you call and you want something, the next person you would see is me. But I had that dong, 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 like, what, like a prayer. I come to you, I say good morning, I declare who I was, and I ask you what you wanted. You tell me what you wanted, I do the sketch, wherever it is, and, and send it back to you, and you approve, and you do the job. That was easy, because I had that dung, but facing a crowd, standing up in front of a congregation and talking, that wasn't easy. <laughs> so, so God had to put me in a, put me in a position, put me in a, he had to back you up. Hear what? I'm putting you, you had to talk. Right? And that is how I was able to, I am able to stand here today and be able to say something. Be able to talk because God actually pushed me out there. You understand? And so sometimes you might be in a position where you have a problem. You're afraid to afraid to, 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 to let it be known. But I'm saying the best thing to do is to allow God to bring you out. Make your request known unto God. And he will work it out for you. Amen. So this morning, you know, I I'm not a I still don't speak long. <laughs> Still don't speak much, but I say what I have to say. And this morning, my word to us is, no matter what your situation, no matter what your circumstances, no matter what the problem is, make your request known unto God and let him work it out for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Edwards. Name of your message, Brother Edwards. What comes out of your mouth? Remind me. What do you say when, when you're...